which was a $25 million engineering program for us. Really set it apart from the Pi 4 even. It's got a power button. I know, I know, that's button. that's huge. And this isn't your first time doing custom silicon either. No. And nobody knows what's inside the black box. And nobody knows it's just magic. Right. right. It's just adds numbers together. You can break the fourth wall. Makes Greetings, sense. puny humans. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sitting down and taking some time to talk to us about Raspberry Pi and more importantly today, Raspberry Pi 5. A whole new thing for yeah. us. What changed? What allowed you to kind of um, bring it to market? I think we just became more, I mean, obviously this is a platform we've been working on for an enormous length of time. Yeah. Um, so we, we, you know, we say, you know, when we, when we launched, possibly even when we launched Pi 3, but certainly by the time we launched 3 Plus in 2018, mm -hmm. this was already well underway. So this is kind of a five, six, seven year program. So, you know, we did know this was coming. I think what probably changed for us over the last six to nine months is as we came out of the supply chain shortage, yeah. Uh, we got a lot more confident that we we're actually going to be able to deliver it and deliver it in decent volumes in the first few months of, uh, of launch. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're very excited, and I think I speak on behalf of the whole community. Um, some of the features of the Pi 5 uh, really set it apart from the Pi 4 even. It's got a power button. I know, I know, that's, that's huge. Mm -hmm. And the, the real-time clock battery connector. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I think, you know, there's a, there's a huge amount of, I mean, this was a $25 million dollar engineering program for us. Big Raspberry Pi, the first uh, flagship Raspberry Pi product uh, that, that has Raspberry Pi silicon on that. That yeah. alone was about a $15 million component of the program. But I think, you know, when we do the spec list, it's like 100-point font power button, 50-point yeah. font uh, uh, real-time clock, yeah. then 10-point font, you know, yeah. 2.4 gigahertz, Cord X876 with 2 megabyte L3 cache, you know, all down there. And this isn't your first time doing custom silicon either. No, depending on how you count, this is either our second or our third, well, custom silicon or, or your sort of custom semiconductor products. So obviously, mm -hmm. we have RP2040, mm -hmm. which is a microcontroller yes. in, in Raspberry Pi Pico. That's now been in the market um, uh, two and a half years since the start mm -hmm. of 21. Um, but we also have RP3. Um, so RP3, RP3 A0, which is the, um, the chip that's on, on, um, on zero 02. Yep. Now, that's not our silicon, so that's Broadcom right. silicon and Micron silicon, but it's our package design. So Simon, right. Simon Martin here did that package design. So that's kind of a, it's like a halfway house where you're kind of taking some of the skills that you developed to do your own silicon and using it to do kind of something clever, you know, to, to, yeah. that it's enabled that form factor uh, for, for, for the Zero Two. Um, it's kind of a fun thing, which is, so the, the silicon that's on Pi 5 is called RP1. Yeah. Um, and on top of the package, it says RP1. Now, uh, RP2040 on the package, it says RP2. Okay. And RP3 on the package, it says RP3. Okay. And we kind of have been sitting there waiting for someone to say, hey, what about RP1? And it's right. never, the questions never come, right? Right. And the reason it's RP1, of course, is we started it before anything else. So you can see a, you can see a timeline just based on the numbering the of the chips. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, so some, the Pi 5. Yeah, some programs are hard, some programs are, no, no programs are easy, but some, part, so, some programs are hard and some yeah. pro programs are very hard. Yeah. And therefore, if you number them in the order you start them, they don't necessarily come out in, in, in numerical order. So I'm kind of, it's kind of fun to have right. RP1. And that also kind of shows you, I mean, you know, you could argue maybe there's an RP0 kicking around there somewhere, but it does kind of show you that they're really, you know, we have actually drained the pipeline now. There's no more sneaky. Yeah. There's no more sneaky available at least now. That's cool. And, and it's, it's exciting to see Raspberry Pi. Uh, and, and obviously, the company is over 10 years old at this point, mm. um, but continuing to stretch their legs in creating custom chips that will go onto their boards uh, and what that means for the future, only time will tell. Yeah. Um, but it is exciting to see that. So I, I guess uh, one of the things that I want to convey to our, our customers and our users is um, all of the new features and what really puts this board into a, uh, not that the Pi 4 wasn't, but a, a full computer mm. scenario. Yeah, that's the interesting thing. I think we're looking at about a factor of, we're saying two to three, but it's for most use cases, it seems to be on the three end of, of mm -hmm. two to three, um, performs uplift over Pi 4. And that's uplift over the 1.8 gig Pi 4. So remember, Pi 4 already yeah. picked up a 20% increment during its life, lifespan as we went from 1.5 to 1.8 gigahertz. Right. So it's then another uh, two to three X on top of that. And that means you've got probably about, depending how you measure, maybe 130, 150x performance delta between Raspberry Pi 1 from 11 years ago and Raspberry Pi 5. Yeah. Um, and that's really, the interesting thing is, you know, Pi 4 came along, obviously Pi 4 came along at a really interesting time. It came along at a really useful time for us because it was nine months before 
the pandemic lockdowns. It was nine yeah. months before people, before this explosion, which I know obviously affected, affected your organization, um, this explosion in demand for computing. Now, we right. had a problem here in the UK that a huge number of kids were sent home with no real... Oh yeah, go study from yeah. home. No, nobody ever really engaged their brain and thought, oh, "Hey, I wonder if those kids have computers." Right. Uh, and the answer turned out for about seven, eight hundred thousand families turned out to be no. There's no computer at home, so you're going to try and study. Maybe, maybe you've got a smartphone. Right. Now, right. the great thing about having Pi Four at that time was we were able to deploy Pi Fours. We had some wonderful charitable gifts yeah. uh, from, from the Bloomfield Trust and, and a couple of other organisations that funded deployment of Pi Four to kids during lockdown. And what we found from that is, yes, it is a very functional, usable desktop PC, but if you sit in front of it, you wouldn't imagine that you're sitting in front of a regular desktop PC. There's right. a level of latency, there's a level of, um, it, it's a lower performance level. So it feels like um, maybe a netbook. It doesn't yep. feel like a regular a desktop PC, it feels maybe like a mid-range netbook. The interesting thing about that two to three X on top of that performance is it takes you very squarely from kind of netbook performance to laptop. Yep. performance um i have um i have a 2015 i have a 2015 and a 2020 uh macbook air and the 2020 mm -hmm. is my primary machine and then i have a 2015 one as a backup machine at home if i leave my laptop at work um pi 5 is about this has about the same performance as my 2015 yep. macbook air which is a very decent daily driver laptop even today yes Yep. Yeah. And so that's it. That's, I think that's probably the one thing from a kind of a general consumer point of view. This one really legitimately is a no compromises PC. We have, I have one on my desk at the office and I kind of, I find myself forgetting. Right. You know, you sit down and you use it a bit and you just forget that you're using Raspberry Pi hardware. Yeah, you're just in, in the middle of your daily computing needs and, yeah. and, and by the way, it's a Raspberry Pi. Yes. yes. That's awesome. Yes, that's awesome. And, you know, and that we've been able to do this, that we've been able to do this without much of, you know, we haven't been able to do it a, a, a a price parity with the right. previous products, so it's a five dollar sure. uh, increment. But we've been able to do it very close to price parity with the previous platforms. Super, super exciting. In an era when obviously you know a dollar isn't worth what it used to be. Right, right, right. right. And I mean, even just adding some simple things such as a, a switch and a couple of new connectors, right. including things like PCI Express, uh, those are all cost adders. So you guys have been able to maintain. Yeah. Uh, the affordable cost, even with all of the development, which I think is impressive, um, and the cost adders in terms of the components. What sort of things, projects, uh, do you anticipate coming down the line that people might be using outside of even just general purpose computing? Well, look, I'm super excited about the general purpose computing mm -hmm. angle. Uh, particularly the, you mentioned PCI Express. We have a, uh, we have a, a little um, uh, FPC connector on the board that exposes a single lane NX1 um, lane of Gen 2 PCI Express. Um, I think what we're going to be able to do is build a, and then we have the official case. We have a new case right. for this product, um, which has a fan. It, it's got, it's got, we've put a lot of effort into the air handling. You know, as you as you push performance up, inevitably it comes with, with more heat. And so we put a lot of effort into the air handling inside this case. But it has a very nice structure in that you have a you have a fan which is positioned over the um, uh, over the CPU, and then you have the PCI Express run, PCI Express connector at the edge of the board. And what I think what I think we're going to be able to do um, shortly after launch is to produce an accessory which takes that PCI Express lane and in a kind of L shaped board exposes it to an M2 connector. That allows yeah. you to plug a small NVMe drive into it, uh, a twenty-two thirty format yep. uh, N uh, NVMe drive, and that will fit inside the enclosure because that L shape fits around the fan. And so oh, what you'll okay. have there is you'll have a completely compact enclosure that has very high-speed non-volatile storage um, and high capacity with like let's say a one terabyte or a two terabyte. Uh, now you're talking about yeah. network attached storage options. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so uh, and, yeah, particularly so for so for for general purpose computing, obviously, particularly with Intel. Mm -hmm. Giving up on the NUC, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a it's a NUC-like object at that point. It's a fully integrated NUC-like object. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, obviously, yes, it, it makes a fantastic. It will make a fantastic NAS. Uh, people who want to uh, play media on it, obviously, they'll be able to have an enormous amount of capacity for media storage. Uh, people who want to play, you know, people who want to play computer games on it, you know, got a library of, of computer games you want to play. Um, there are a lot of a lot of use cases for the kind of capacity of storage and the speed of storage as you the, the opportunity to go off the end of what you can achieve in a micro SD card in terms of right. speed, what you can achieve in a micro SD card in terms of um, capacity, and to be able to do that without um, having a, a, an external USB 3 drive right. hanging off the side of the object. You can do it entirely within the footprint 
right. uh, of, the, of the device itself. Uh, an interesting point on the SD card, we didn't talk about it very much, but that's a, there's a 2x performance increase there as well. It's interesting how many places in the platform there's a 2x, a 2x or more performance increase. So we support now the SDR 104, 104 megabytes per second um, uh, high performance mode uh, in the SD card. So you've okay. got more SD card performance. Uh, at the other end of the board, then, of course, you have more USB performance. Mm -hmm. So we have more USB 3 performance. So it's, it's kind of a, um, the idea is really with the whole platform, for across a whole range of use cases, whether that's sort of general purpose computing or one of these more kind of project-based um, uh, um, uh, use cases, uh, to try to deliver a kind of a balanced uplift in performance is probably one of the most I think Pi 4 struck quite a nice balance between yeah. all of the all of the performance all of the all of the functionality in the platform and so it felt like probably rather than kind of pushing you know if we pushed CPU but hadn't pushed IO or vice versa um, that would have been that would have unbalanced the platform again so it's very much doing everything we can just to move all of the move all of those numbers up yeah it feels it feels very much like a um, and apologies on the, the comparison here but it feels very much like an ultra version, mm. right? Compared to it's all right, they've done okay. Yeah, they've done okay. Yeah, yeah. If I can have their share price, then I'll be. <laughs> there you go. I know you've got some kiddos now. Yeah, I have a, I have a three. I somehow, staggeringly, I have a three year old and a six year old. Right? Three year old and a six year old. How does the time go? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Did you say you have a seven seven year old and a one year old. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's seven just, year old, one year old. Yeah. And you see the particularly the big the big one, and you're like. You used to be like this. Yeah, I used yeah. to be able to hold you in my. I used yeah. to be able to hold her on my arm. Like yep, this. not anymore. For our children's generation, is what? What are your hopes and dreams for their interaction with computing? I, I think we went through a very dark period, right? We went through a period where there was an expectation um, everywhere in the education system, policymakers, parents, um, that, that that the future for children was office skills. That the future, mm. that the right future for children was to take a step back from really understanding what happens inside the piece of hardware that's in front of them, uh, and to say, hey, you know, this is a tool. You know, this is a tool for my entertainment. This is a tool for my productivity. Um, this is not something like this. is a piece of functional magic. Right. Um, now, I think the huge change that, that, that we've helped create, but certainly that we've been present at the same time as, is this 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 move back to a to a to an acknowledgement that there is value, uh, even if you need, not saying everybody needs to be a computer programmer, but that there is value in people having some understanding of what this object in front of them is actually doing inside, and that it's yeah. not magic. And, and this becomes more important over time, you know, particularly as the as some of the behaviors of the devices become more magic. You know, right. You know, you know uh, large language models. Yeah. It's, it's magic. I mean, to me, I know what they're doing at a high level. Yep. But it still looks like magic, right? You know, um, and I think as the behavior of the objects becomes more magic, it becomes more important to remind ourselves that these are machines that add numbers together. Right, that's all they're doing. That's all right. ChatGPT is doing. It is adding, multiplying numbers. Yep. Um, uh, but you know, that really is that. You know, under what we've discovered, you know, from the experience there of ChatGPT, is not that computers are magic. It's that a thing that we thought was magic, the yep. ability to write basically coherent. English, right, right, isn't magic, <laughs> right? <laughs> the, the, you know, so we've, we've, you know, the, the, so I think, I think that's one kind of, I kind of hope that we see at least a continuation, a stabilization of this very positive place that yeah. we've ended up at in, in your country and, and in mine and, and in many other places, um, and hopefully a kind of a, just an enhancement of it. Um, you know, it's this fascinating statistic that came out of the weekend in the paper here. Computer science, when we started Raspberry Pi, was the was the easiest subject, basically the easy, roughly the easiest subject to get into Cambridge with. So you had about a three to one applicant application ratio, which you know Cambridge wants ten yep. to one application ratios. Um, but the weekend we had a, an article in the in the Times of London uh, that said that uh, last year only five point six percent of applicants to computer science at Cambridge got in. Right, it's nearly let's call that what an eighteen to one, sure. an eighteen to one application ratio. Uh, it's actually the hardest subject to get into at. Uh, at either Oxford or Cambridge, uh, and all of the conversation now about uh, now is about within the organisation, within the institution, is about well, hang on a second, we've discovered this. You know, you go from a, a world where you're wondering whether there is going to be a computer science faculty in ten years' time to one where you're saying, well, hang on a second, our lecture theatres were specced for a world of eighty kids, and now we have one hundred and twenty. You know, right. they've grown, the, and you know, they've got those ratios while growing the cohort. We've now got one hundred and twenty kids. Well, if you want one hundred and fifty kids. 
how do we need to scale our organization or to be able to, de to deliver that? So I think, I mean, I, I do believe that they're growing up in a fascinating period. It's kind yeah. of now just about at the point where I want to start to introduce my daughter, my six-year-old, yeah. uh, to computer programming. I don't want to do it too soon. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, there she is. And I was, I, was, I was nine, I was eight, nine when I, when I started playing with, really properly playing with computers. But she is excited about it. Uh, my little three-year-old, he's very excited about it as well, but he's more excited from a graphic design perspective. Sure. When he sees the Raspberry Pi logo anyway. Raspberry Pi! Right. From when he was like, you know, he, you know, he, he didn't speak super early, but, you know, from some of his very earliest words. Was yeah. Like, Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi. I can, I, can, I can tell you that with my daughter, she was aware of Raspberry Pi also yeah. at a very early, very early age because of the logo, because yes. of the, the branding. Yes. I mean, it's very, very powerful. It's a powerful, it's a really powerful brand. I mean, we've revised the, the, the fine detail of that, um, of that logo mm -hmm. in particular over the last year, um, but it certainly is something that kind of reaches out and grabs, reaches out and grabs young people in the way that it was designed to. Just for fun, I'd like to ask you a few lightning questions. You're not aware of these ahead of time, no, correct? No, so, um, let's go for it. And they may or may not make sense, okay. so we'll see. Uh, this one's easy. Favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, um, ooh, it's not that easy. It's coconut. Ah, coconut. Truly. 100%. Wow. Yeah. So curry houses in the UK used to do these, um, um, you get like half a coconut with, yeah. with, with coconut ice cream and a little chocolate, a little chocolate in the, in the middle. And that's just my idea. Or sometimes a little cherry, depending on the brand. Yeah, yeah. But it was, you know, that's my idea of heaven. Just kind yeah, of, and they come out of the freezer and they're really hard. The, the yeah. ice cream is really hard, and you can just shave little bits. For the first few mouthfuls, you're just yep. shaving little bits of ice cream off the top, and it lasts. It seems like it's going to last a long time, <laughs> and then it softens up, softens up, and you eat it in the three mouthfuls. Acorn or Sinclair? Acorn, obviously. Okay. Acorn. It's it's weird. Um, uh, I think Acorn, but a couple of caveats. One, there's definitely a Acorn and Amiga. Tribe in the UK okay. and a Sinclair and ST and Atari um, uh, tribe, and it's largely about money. It's largely yeah. about how much money you want to spend on a computer. Uh, I was Acorn Amiga, but mm -hmm. I uh, my Acorn was a very beaten up. So I was Acorn Amiga on a on a Sinclair ST budget. So my BBC Micro is a very beaten up old second hand one. I had to hit it to make it boot for some reason. You hit it on top of the power supply and turn the power supply on while it was still vibrating. And percussive maintenance. Uh, yeah, percussive maintenance. Um, and my Amiga was very very shop soiled. But I am yeah I'm definitely an interesting thing with Raspberry Pi. Of course, while we probably um, trace our history. Um, to Acorn more than to Sinclair, um, the device itself probably has more, in a way, design philosophy. Um, it's it's more similar to a Sinclair product mm. in that it is um, price is price engineered. Right. I mean, I think we have a probably a higher, I hope, <laughs> a higher um, standard when it comes to quality, uh, more focus on quality than Sinclair's products maybe did. But the idea that you take a price point and you engineer the very best thing you can make for that right. price point rather than taking a feature set, building it, and then finding out what price it is, is very much, that's very much the Raspberry Pi mentality. Favorite non-electronic toy from your childhood? Oh, favorite non-electronic toy, toy from my childhood? I mean, probably Lego. I mean, like a lot of people, I mean, it's barely non-electronic, right, in the sense that it's so subtle right. that, that it, it kind of shades into, it shades into the same culture, the same subculture that electronics and computer programming uh, as in other things, what did I, what did I, what did I really use until it, until it fell apart? Um, I mean, lots of these little kind of die cast, and these companies are all gone now. Um, they're kind of little die cast um, soldiers, spacemen mm. with a little plastic, a little yep. plastic base, you know, yep. a little weighted plastic base, um, uh, or, or and then plastic ones with little weighted metal bases. Yeah, and those you just used to have a lot of fun just. Building scenes, you know, having telling, yeah. telling, telling stories. Um, it's hard for me because computer programming, first Lego, and then computer programming kind of really fell on me very hard. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, 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 you know, I have no hinterland. I just spent my childhood yeah. writing computer programs. Um, but, but yeah, certainly in, in the, the earlier years, some of those just things that let you tell things that let you tell stories, right? Right. Because that's what we do. Right? right. That's kind of increasingly what I do. You know, Raspberry Pi. Obviously, I you know, continue to try to do as much technical work as I can. But a lot of my role is sort of telling the story of um, and reminding people what the story is because people forget. Yeah. You know, telling people the story of even as we become a well, we become an increasingly dominant, say, provider of industrial electronics. Right. Um, right. Uh, you know, um, reminding people and telling people the story 
um, about why we why we started doing this and reminding them that it still matters. Yeah. yeah, we may have we may feel like we've won, but you know, backsliding. Right. We can still we can still slide back. You guys, we're like kids. You know, what's the nightmare scenario that we take our eye off the ball and in ten years' time we end up in the same place we were ten years ago? And nobody knows what's inside the black box. And nobody knows. It's just magic, right? Right. It just adds numbers together. Right. That's all it does. Yeah. You know, just need someone to whisper that in people's ears from time to time. Keep mind. the keep the dream of, yeah. of awareness uh, alive. Yeah. 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 That's it. That's it. And it's fun, you know. The Nan to Tetris world, you know. Yeah. It's more fun playing Tetris if you can build it out of Nan Cave. Yeah. It's been fun. Always a pleasure to sit down and talk with you. Um, and, and fantastic to have you over here in Cambridge. Right? Yeah, it's thank you so much. It's wonderful to bring people here and show them this is a toy. You know, talk about toys. What's my favorite toy? The University of Cambridge. Yeah. Uh, and it's always nice to have a chance to show my toys. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to get over here every year. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you.